Look around. It's everywhere. You can feel it, can't you? People are smiling. They're excited. They're, dare I say it, joyful. Kamala Harris and Tim Walls are everything Trump and Vance are not. They're genuinely decent people. They want good things for us. They want to move us forward, not back. They want to protect democracy, to enshrine our rights, to stay the hell out of our doctor's offices and public school libraries, to keep weapons of war off our streets, poison out of our water supply, and rapists out of office. They're giving us hope. They're getting us excited, excited to vote for something. We know we can win this thing, that we will win this thing, and we're actually having fun in the process. I mean, ain't that some shit? See, none of Trump's tricks are working. He can't change the narrative. He can't distract VP Harris or Governor Walls with his bullshit. When they're not ignoring him outright, they're mocking him and it's working. He's becoming increasingly unhinged and they are kicking his ass. It's a pretty well-established fact that I love Joe Biden. <laughs> And I firmly believe that he would have won if the choice were between him and Donald Trump. But I also believe that he made this choice for our country. And because he did that, I'm even more determined to make sure that his sacrifice of his reelection pays off and we elect Kamala and Tim Walz. My guest this week is Comedian, podcast host, musician, and all around incredibly talented, funny, brilliant, kind, wonderful Hal Sparks. I got to see him perform at the Sexy Liberal show last weekend in New York City, and I have to tell you, he is one of the funniest human beings I've ever seen in my life. Go to his website, check out his comedy show, check out his band, check out his socials, do all the things, because he is awesome. I'm so excited about this. Welcome to the Are You Effing Kidding Me podcast, Hal Sparks. Hi, Hal. Hi. Thank you for having me on. I, I, and, and the interesting thing is that I spent most of my life kidding people. So I, and I don't even take offense at the title of your show uh, because I know exactly from whence it comes because we live in the dumbest simulation ever. And every time we turn around, there's so much holy shit going on uh, mm -hmm. that it's hard to keep track. It's kind of amazing. Um, I find myself saying that every day, pretty much. Well, many times a day. Are you kidding me? <laughs> like, let's just start. Let's just start with the Trump's like completely unhinged press conference yesterday, and so and good. and how the media handled that versus, of course, Lawrence O'Donnell, how he responded to how the media handled oh. it. Oh. Oh, he was he was livid. And I and I got to say, he was like, uh, you know, the fact that they don't have the capability to do a live fact check during the whole thing, which they absolutely do. I was like, that's my show. That's what I did. I did it. When it went live, I went live. I was doing a test stream. So I was like, shoot, I'll just I'll just practice on this idiot. And I did the whole thing. And the, the weird part is, and he's absolutely right, that Trump does not uh, answer questions. That's a long and heralded heralded history in politics. Right. Dovetail the question towards what you really want to talk about. That's not what's new about this. What's new about this is that it was this weird loop of the same bullshit over and over again it was like like he kept going back to uh the the you know insane asylums and the and people coming across the border like that was like did i forget to say that so i used to do if you ever do the stand up at the denver comedy works bless their heart it's a great club but when you're first going there and if you're not known if you don't have a name enough to say no there's three shows on saturday there's two shows uh, uh, you know, one show Friday or Thursday, two shows Friday, three shows on Saturday. You started like 630. It's nuts. And it's like 20% less oxygen. So you're crazy already. And I didn't drink. I can only imagine what drinking comics are like. But by the third set, you are literally hanging on for dear life. And you're like, have I already said this? Where am I? Holy God. Is this, I, 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 you, the audience is blurry now. I can't even pick out like you, I, the second time I went there, I literally was like each show, I'm going to pick out a person in the audience who I know is not going to be at the next show because I have a lot of free repeaters because I'm good at what I do, but mm -hmm. I pick out somebody in the front row just to go, okay, show one, 
guy, you know, in blue shirt. Show two, lady in yellow shirt. Show two, you know, three, woman in dress. Whatever it was, I'll fixate on the fact that, okay, this is show three. Okay, good. I, and I, I'll have a list. My, I didn't even have a set list. I would have who was there scratched off. And I'm like, okay, this is the third show. I haven't said anything. Just start from scratch. Fine. And uh, it's nuts. That's after 20% less oxygen, exhausting yourself with three shows. It The show starts at fucking 1130 at night. You have press in the morning. I have a radio show in the morning. So I was totally exhausted in those moments. This is Donald Trump, put, like at his own impetus, saying, I'm going to have a general press conference, running out and setting up four flags in one of his empty dining rooms where nobody goes. And apropos of fuck all, mm -hmm. having a presser, right? Right. So there's no excuse. He hasn't right. done anything for six goddamn days. Right. The next place he's going is to Montana, like he's Richard Dreyfus in fucking uh, uh, Close Encounters. I think that was Wyoming, actually, but you know what I mean. Um, that's where Devil's Tower is. Anyways, mm -hmm. uh, at, like he's going to friendly territory again. Like it's the most relaxing. It's a bitch fest, not a rally. Mm -hmm. so he, he has no excuse for not being on the money, nailing it and dismount and then mm -hmm. fuck off. Right. To use an Olympic uh, reference. And he still exit. Mr. You know, queen of all media, whatever the fuck he thinks he is, where he, he knows he can brand things. He gives people nicknames. He's he just nails them. Right. Bang. Boom. Nobody. Nobody knows how to even deal with this Wolverine with an IQ of Einstein that he is. Right. <laughs> right. And and yet. It was a blathering, just whiny, low T bitch fest, as it's been called. Didn't even have time to put on the full face makeup. It was like red versus his more, more like I don't know, fluorescent. He was very muted. Maybe with yes. the light. Well, no, I think I, I think he, whenever he has to do his own, he just kind of like smacks his uh like hands in some pumpkin rind and some cheetos and then just goes ready to go <laughs> you know what i mean like, like you know what i love about him though i really do and it's maybe just the uh to quote rfk jr the redneck in me except i actually am one um because any any you, you can tell a redneck guy because our dream girl is the girl who will put her hand in your back pocket at the state fair when you're walking around it's not about it's not even about holding hands if she puts your hand in your far right back pocket standing on your left or vice versa Romantic that's, she's a, she uh, yeah hey man she's a keeper baby that's a dream come true let me tell you what where do you put your smokes out. though it's like they're in the other pocket i don't know where do you keep they them? rolled up in your sleeve what are you talking about and also smoke. It's a steak fair. You can't smoke at a steak fair. You can dip though. It's oh, weird. So right. smoke dissipates in the air, but you can dip and spit all over the place, and nobody gives a shit. I have well, not I do it it anyway. <laughs> but I do not mind. By the way, oh, it's all <laughs> good. My cousin boyfriend. So he's oh. in my family. <laughs> Come on now. I you know I I couldn't love you more if we were twice related. <laughs> So, um, but the, the idea, back to normalcy, relative normalcy. Right, right. Well, that's like it. Trump, Trump coming out and, and, and kind of uh, like rambling on in this situation of his own making and then never sort of finding his way back to anything useful. He, I think, I think. The premise of the reasoning and what the excuse he had for saying this were these farcical debates that somebody from his team called up NBC and said, hey, you guys want to debate if we uh, if we can get them to do it? And they went, sure. And he's like, talks are in order that we're with NBC. We're working out the finer details like where it'll be, who will be there, what kind of audience is there, whether the other side will do it. You can't fucking call them up and offer a debate. And of course, they're going to say yes. It, it, what are the terms? Uh, yeah, I'm gonna have only my family there. It's gonna be at Mar a Lago, <laughs> and I get right. to be high as fuck. And they don't ask me any substantive questions at all. But these are the terms. Yeah. And Kamala can't go. Yeah. Just a just a picture, a cardboard cutout of her, and I answer right. for her. <laughs> yeah, right. Yeah, you agreed. I, the, I am the worst <laughs> vice president, the least popular, and my crowds are small. <laughs> and right, yeah. <laughs> Odd cackle. 
and I'm and I'm really just a placeholder because they really want Joe Biden to come back and he's really really mad and Donald Trump is Whoa. the perfect person to communicate that point because yes he of course speaks for Joe Biden <laughs> I like I got to say, like he is if anything points to the fact that he is freaked the fuck out is that he's like Bring Joe Biden. I'm like, asshole, you were going to lose to him, too. You don't the tightening. I love Kamala. I think this is a great ticket. I love yeah. adding walls. We'll talk about that. I have no doubt. Yes. But let me tell you the 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 polls were narrowing. Biden was ahead by two points. Even after the debate, he was going to fucking win. He really was. Yeah. Sorry, Pod Save America. Fuck you guys. He was going to win. And and maybe because of his age next year, there might have been a story about him stepping down or something like that. I seriously doubt it because yeah. we're getting through some of the, the worst of the Ukraine war and uh, what's happening in Israel right now. Probably by the end of the year, most of this stuff will be transitioned into whatever its new phase is. And the world would be uh, a, a lot. It'll still be stressful for the president, but normal stress as opposed to crazy bill passing stress as opposed to holy shit. Right. And um, no. And but Trump still thinks I mean, he's just scared that his myth of the black voter is somehow leaving him because blackity black black, which is why he's freaking out about her being she she's not even really black, God damn it, like this weird. He's reaction no and he's a criminal this is the two things that the black people like to vote for fancy gold yeah. sneakers oh, and criminals yeah and and, he, and and criminal justice reform because you know i helped get him but i got you out of jail vote for me like it's the weirdest like yeah. of course of course that all boils down to all donald trump thinks of when he sees a black person is criminal mm -hmm. that's all he can think and, and, and if they're not a criminal, they're a low wage worker. That whole thing about black jobs. Let me tell you something. But the reason in, in his mentality is that uh, a black there's a difference between a job and a career. But a job is what you have when you just grind. You work and you have no future. You're not going to have any savings. It's just what you do to get by, just to feed yourself and your family. But it's not it has no purpose. You just a you know, you're uh, you're an extra in his world. You're a waiter or a fucking driver or whatever. But you're that's a job. A career has a trajectory to it. And that's what orange people have. Orange people have trajectories and they have a career. Mm -hmm. Black people have jobs. Now, to him, I'm sure he would admit. And when he said black job, is there anybody that has a job? And what he means by that, there, that that it seems atrocious and stupid, but he genuinely means it. And what he means is. Not all jobs are black jobs, but all black jobs are jobs. Mm -hmm. All black work is a job. There, there is occasionally a rich one that breaks through. That's a Will Smith or something like that. Arson. That whatever. Yeah, yeah, that's just that's Great an outlier. But the vast majority of black people, the 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 glass ceiling ends at. Would you like fries with that? That's what he thinks of them. Mm -hmm. It really is. Yeah, so that's no, what he means by black jobs. That's exactly what he fucking means by black mm -hmm. jobs. And that that's the part that's missed by it just being racist. People just kind of go, what's a black job? What the fuck is black? black? Just saying black job is racist enough where people are like, fuck you. But it dig deeper. And it really is his his philosophy, his ethic, his his economic theory about an entire group of human beings. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And he, he talks about them all the time as if he ever had their vote. And he was, I was gaining on them. I was gaining on them and, and lies and says that, you know, black unemployment was lowest under him. It wasn't. But, but, but right. yeah. So yesterday, I think personally, part of it was, yes, these mystical, magical, magical, fantastical debates. But also he was super fucking triggered by her crowd sizes because it's yes. still fucking crowd sizes with this little tiny pan in the stands. <laughs> pathetic he's still obsessed with this shit well i mean i think to him because he can't drive a car okay he can't drive he can't drive a car he can drive a golf cart barely most of the time he doesn't somebody else drives it for him but he can yeah. barely drive a golf cart but he certainly can't drive a stick shift or a manual transmission much less an electric car he has no idea how they fucking work he can't drive a car so he can't have the dick replacement that a giant truck would give you let's say if you had a big the you know and granted as somebody who uh you know uh am com completely comfortable with my anatomy i still wanted the marty mcfly black truck from uh from back to the future the one that's in the garage when he comes home i mean come on that thing is sweet as shit but 
Um, if you're one of those guys who has to replace his masculinity with a vehicle or a gun, again, Trump can't shoot either. So currently. Right. What does he what does he make up for being a mushroom tip um, with crowd size? Right. Crowd sizes. Crowd size is what he has instead of a monster truck and an AR-15. And if you and if you point out that his crowd size is small, I I would assure you there's no problem. Right. That's that's where he goes. Then MLK. Bigger than MLK. A oh, bigger audience than MLK, yeah. By the way, your mic is choppy. I don't know if it's that way on your recording or just sent to me. Full time? Is it still uh, doing yeah. it? Yeah. Really? It's a little better. That's better, a little cleaner. Better, better, better. Is this better? Is it uh, better, 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 better? Uh, yeah. I'm going to keep talking. Is it still choppy or no? No, it's know. less choppy now. Whatever. That's but I, weird. I, we're going to, we'll do a, I'm going to send, uh, I'm going to send you my tech guy and we're going to make sure that all your tech is, is tip top. Yeah, it's hard to say. I also, probably should have it higher, but then I always feel like I look like I have a giant penis in my. Oh, face. Yeah. right. <laughs> um, I now nah, it it looks like you have a tiny robot who wants to kiss you. Um, Aww. oh, yeah. Hey. Hi, I, is that any better? I don't. Just he's like looking at you're going Eva. Um, That's one of my favorite Disney movies of all time, by the way. I feel like that it's, it's completely underrated, and it is a lovely, 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 lovely movie. It's it's great. I I all the sleeper ones, and and uh, because my kid grew up in kind of the what I would call is like the perfect window of those Pixar movies. I really have to say um, that it, Cars, like that that uh, the song in Cars, because like my that. son was yeah. This is our town. This is your town too. You know that song. Yeah. Oh god! <laughs> um, because my son was like four, mm -hmm. you know, and, and he would sit on the bed and go cars, and I'm like, <laughs> yeah, that's me in the opening song to Inside Out. That just the the little piano and and uh, it's like it's four little tiny notes and when you hear it when I hear it now I just instantly start crying um I'm gonna have to try and find that and play it for you but um mm -hmm. I just, yeah I just very triggering but I just love when she goes Wally he says e Wally right <laughs> Eva Eva and he's got he's got a very E.T. voice you know who yeah. did the voice of E.T. do you know who did the voice of E.T. I don't Deborah Winger Stop it right now. Stop it yeah. right now. Yeah. Yeah. Deborah Winger was the voice of E.T. E.T. E. Home. Home, 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 home. That's Deborah Winger. Yeah. Yeah, you're welcome. Don't have words. To, I don't understand. How did this come to pass? How did somebody, how was somebody like, you know, does this really funny, weird, throaty voice? Never wear. You know that hot chick from Officer and a Gentleman? That yeah. lady. Yeah. Yeah, the girl The girl we hired to be, uh, uh, who was not as pretty as Linda Carter, but close to like the approachable Wonder Girl. Sidekick, yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah. And who uh, later in her movie career was like uh, um, a, uh, like a, uh, like a, a beautiful version of uh, like a, Rosanna, Rosanna, Dana. Like <laughs> she would just, you know, that that's. Yeah. Um, I need to know the backstory there because that's crazy. I have no idea. I don't yeah, know. I think, I, I think they didn't know what the voice. Here's my guess. They didn't know what the voice was going to sound like, and so they had people come in and spitball. And so they're bringing in men and women to try and see if it would be a higher voice, a lighter voice, if it was going to be a breathy voice, whatever. And then she you know, just they, came up with one, and that was that. It was well famous then, obviously, because yeah, not what in '83. Um, eighty-two, mm -hmm. mm -hmm. something like that. And so she'd have, she'd already had some really big hits. Like, wasn't she in um, terms of endearment already? That was already out. Had to be. I don't know. Uh, maybe. Mm -hmm. I maybe mean, something like that. Yeah, I'm going down a wormhole. Uh, yeah. That is nuts. that was a that was a big deal. Yeah, that's incredible. Yeah. Well, now I'm I'm going to be the coolest person in my friend group. I know that because I'm going to pull that out of my ass. I wish I went to trivia. Now. Do it. Um, yeah, yeah, that is all. I had no idea. And I, wow. Okay. Now I've learned something, uh, but, but let's, let's, all right, let's pivot since that's wow. Okay. Illuminating. Let's talk about 
Tim Walls. And let's talk about this ticket. Mm-hmm. And let's talk about, we can talk about everything because you and I just, we just did Steph's live show together in this, in New York City, which was so incredible. lovely. I'm the luckiest person alive to be even remote. We got to hang out. We got to hang out afterwards, which was the lovely part because we normally don't. Like a lot of times my schedule is such that it just kind of like you get swept away, you do the meet and grope, and then you're, and then it's bedtime and airplane. I mean, it was that, but since it was New York and no one sleeps. Right. Yeah, we were just awake till just ass in the morning. And I was like, my plane's in two hours. <laughs> it's so much fun hanging out, too. It was like, that was incredible. Yeah, yeah it, it was an incredible night all the way across the board. And one of the things that we talked about, we all talked about, was this kind of process of dealing with what had been done to Joe Biden and him stepping yes. aside for the country and how it's okay to be like, still kind of like, what the fuck about that? But mm-hmm. also we can embrace this ticket and we can talk about this ticket and we can talk about what this ticket is offering and we can talk about the joy and the excitement and the enthusiasm yes. and the promise of America. So tell me your feelings about all of that and as quickly as possible. Well, <laughs> yes, exactly. Uh, the The primary being is that a lot of the, why, uh, why I had a lot of anger about this was that a lot of people are trying to broom Joe Biden were trying to broom Kamala as well, that they were trying to like leg sweep this ticket that they never supported in the beginning, that they've been soft peddling their support. When you wonder why people don't know about the infrastructure bill, they don't know how much like, uh, you know, green energy stuff there was in the rescue package and stuff. I'll tell you exactly why. It's because the bunch of people with the butt hurt people who are supporting other people during the primary are still mad that Joe Biden became the nominee, still mad that Kamala Harris became the VP. And they're and they took it out on them by slow walking all the wins. That's why. And that has serious consequences for the fucking country. That is that is a that in and of itself is a level of malfeasance that's just fucking embarrassing. And to kind of like soft pedal it and go, well, this side, maybe. And I don't know if they'll be able to. But no, fuck you. There are so many flags in the ground that Joe Biden has planted that are incredible that tiptoeing around them at all is tacitly playing both siderism. And that's what a bunch of them did. So again, the people that I've named before that I, that need not be named again. Um, a lot of them were aiming at a total new ticket. They were not only under the pre- the impression that Biden, Biden wouldn't get reelected, which he absolutely fucking would have, yeah. um, that Kamala had no, cho- no chance. They were also selling that bullshit everywhere. Mm-hmm. And so they wanted to start from scratch. They, they largely thought, whether it was Newsom Shapiro, Newsom Shapiro, or something like that, or or or, or sure. Whitman, right, right, that there yeah. was going to be this like full in like mini primary at the last fucking second, and blah, 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 and we'll just we'll ride that energy in, and instead of like thinking for a second, wait a minute, you're gonna you're gonna broom our first uh, woman uh, uh, of color VP and her natural ascension because she's been part of this ticket that's been so successful. You're just going to push her fucking aside and pretend it never happened. Mm -hmm. Fuck you. And you think that's going to create blossoming energy about whoever the new ticket is. And by the way, you think any of the really smart Dems are going to do that? You think seriously, you think Newsom and Whitmer or any of these folks are going to participate in a, okay, we're going to, here's what we got in the, when the primary happens, You'll be the front runner and maybe Kamala could stay on as VP. And yeah, that's a great way to ruin your fucking career in the Democratic Party forever. None of them are gonna none of them are gonna do that. This is fucking madness. They didn't have a plan. Yeah, they, they didn't have a plan. They just wanted to sweep the leg and hope for the best. Mm-hmm. And it's and it's but Joe Biden, in his strategic wisdom that has not failed him his entire presidency, held the line while they were busting his ass for six weeks mm. till they chose uh, to, two major points happened. They were negotiating the release of these hostages and Trump picked his VP and couldn't get rid of him. Oh. He didn't pick him. And then he had 24 hours till the thing. And then he could swap him out at the last second. He's stuck with this dumbass. And once he was stuck with them and you know what the ticket is, he's like, Whoop, I'm going to go. You, you got it. Tag team. And Trump says, it's like you're fighting a prize fighter and then they, you know, you're making progress and then they replace them with a total prize fighter. Now, never mind the the idea that, A, that's not how that works. And B, um, if, you, if you're exhausted and you're saying they're bringing in somebody fresh, all you're doing is admitting to your exhaustion right. more than anything. It has nothing to do with them. Secondly, it's tag team wrestling, dumbass. If one of them can't do it, they tag and come out. We have a president and a vice president for a reason. We have for a long time. That right. If you don't believe me, 
believe ask Nixon. If you don't believe him, ask fucking Reagan into Bush one. You know, you know, like that's the point. That's what they that's you know, if you have a strategy, that's how you work it. Yeah. So the 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 so like her the support for her, which may have been tacit. I loved her from the beginning. I've loved her since she was in California. I, you know, I supported her early in the campaign. And I, I like, I didn't think she was going to make it through the first time because she was so, it was her first introduction to the national stage. A lot of times it takes a couple of runs before mm -hmm. people know who you are. And let, unless you've been in, you know, on the judiciary committee or something and like Biden was, and there's footage of you for a long time being a national figure, Schumer, right. Pelosi, th that kind of name recognition. You got to run a couple of times before people recognize. Oh yeah, here you go. Perennial for a while, but it got some good points. Building support, nothing wrong with that. And she was young enough to do it, so there's no rush. Right. And I said in you know in 2019, I'm like, it's going to be Biden Harris. Kiss my ass. I said it. I said it on my show multiple times. People could go back and check uh, on my radio show. I was like, it's going to be Biden Harris. Knuckle down and get ready for it. Everybody else who's running is either an, an also ran or is not ready themselves, or does not have what it, it to thread this needle for this time about a woman of color on the ticket and somebody with experience, sort of an inversion of the Obama-Biden uh, winning strategy is all. Again, and Biden knew more, flat out just knew more than anybody on the stage. And the only reason it wouldn't be Buttigieg is because where a woman had won the popular vote by 3 million votes in the, in 2016, but she had lost the electoral college because a lot of misogyny and, and quite frankly, the TYT crowd holding their nose and staying home because it was her. But it showed that the American public was ready for a woman well, many, many years ago, and time has passed. And we've had a, a adjudicated rapist in the office and people who got rid of women's right to choose. So I think there's a little bit of piss factor that's going to be, that was even writing in it, even, even before it had happened, putting the Amy Coney Barrett's and the fucking uh, Brett Kavanaugh, the, that thing drove, I think, people to the polls to help Kamala become the VP, a woman become the VP, and a woman of color even better because of the inclusiveness that of the of the cabinet and what Biden wanted to do on the Supreme Court. Uh, like, it, it fit right in with what he was doing. Nobody else fit. And Pete Buttigieg uh, could be our first gay president. Absolutely. Just a great guy. But he's very young. He's got a lot of runway ahead of him. Yeah. So we can give him time. Mm -hmm. You know, so he didn't he didn't have to. It's like, oh, if we don't put him on, we, we lose him and he'll fade into obscurity. Biden just made him director of transportation. Right. Secretary of transportation. All of it. And, and he's killing it. Right. His organizational skills, his attention to detail, his caring about human beings. All that shit. Fucking brilliant. Wait, defense, surrogacy, all of that stuff. He's amazing. Yeah. Yes, exactly. And him being Secretary of State um, would be, a, I think, a nice step forward. Right. Will it be him? But and and I and partly partly I like it because he's a capable, smart negotiator. He's aware of the details. He's got a great memory. Speaks multiple languages. There's a lot to win there. But also the anti-gay countries and the and the uh, like the butch authoritarian assholes that Trump has sucked up to having to sit across from him at a table just. Yeah. Uh, that is really yeah. yeah. I love right. it. It's bad enough they've had to sit across from Hillary Clinton. That drove them fucking crazy, right? A woman, what? Mm -hmm. Yeah. And they had to listen because it's the most powerful country in the world. Mm -hmm. Same thing be true of a gay man. That'd be fucking spectacular. Yeah. So about is her maybe the next day. I haven't even thought about that. Like, holy shit, that's fun. I mean, and it's of itself. Like picking her cabin is super fun. Yeah. And Walls was, you know, I'm I'm a Kelly guy. I like Kelly a lot. And I, you know, in the same way that like years ago, I I liked I thought Wes Clark should have been the the guy running instead of Carrie, for example. That it, you know, or that Carrie Carrie should have had Wes Clark on his ticket instead of John Edwards, they'd have won. Yeah, you're right. Wes Clark was the head of NATO. You know, he was the he was the NATO like commander or whatever. So yeah. he's got a it, it, like in in this whole like you don't change horses midstream shit mm -hmm. um, during the Iraq War and all that stuff. Changing it to a guy who knew that the that the Vietnam War was futile and knew how to like, and then the other, his vice president is a guy who uh, got us in and out of Kosovo, for example, and, and finished the mission, no dead Americans. Mm -hmm. Like there's a lot, a lot of good stuff there. Mm -hmm. um, this, the same thing is true, uh, you know, with like 
Harris Kelly, for example, because he was in the Navy. His parents were cops. Uh, uh, Gabby, uh, the, the story about Gabby, all that stuff, and him being an astronaut. Yeah. Should he be that? Should he be the head of uh, NASA or perhaps uh, the, you know, the Sports. on the Joint Chiefs or something like that? Awesome. Whatever. There's a there's a lot of room for him in the cabinet as well. Um, but but he's great in Arizona. We don't have to defend his seat mm. soon yeah. and, and worry about that because he's very popular there. So, mm -hmm. yeah, super great. So um, I. I think Walls, like he was the probably the one I knew the least amount about, and that's probably to his benefit to some degree, mm -hmm. because Shapiro had made a lot of noise. Shapiro, I mean, it just, but he was brand new too. That's the thing Shapiro has against him more than anything else. I think is the fact that he just won the election. He's definitely a rising star. People definitely like him, but mm -hmm. he's in his first cycle of this. Mm -hmm. He hasn't gone through the, you know, you know multiple testings from, you know, like, like Walls has Congress and into the, you know, and into the governor's mansion, that kind of thing going multiple campaigns really do help in a campaign. It's got a military background as well. Whatever you want to say about stolen valor, which is bullshit, not even worth amplifying. Yeah. It helps as well. Right. Being among the yeah. ticket. Um, mm -hmm. But in the meantime, um, uh, like that's going to die too. Nobody's going to yeah, buy I that. This, again, it sounds like swift boating and the swift boating shit had an impact on Kerry, really, really did. Yeah, and it should have been allowed to. It was fucking gross that people were wearing purple Band-Aids at the Republican National Convention. You like to talk about how Trump is gross and it is disgusting and dismissive of people's service and all that shit. And then, like, look back. This is not new to the Republican Party. This is, that was some nasty shit. So, mm -hmm. so to you, Everybody who got a purple heart, it's just a fucking band aid. These wussies. Right. He was wounded in battle. Yeah. Right. Yeah, and, and that's the thing. Too. Oh, by the way, meanwhile, they want Trump with his fucking nicked ear to get the Congressional <laughs> Medal of Honor. Right. Well, he, he, he took a bullet for democracy. Who did? Did? Like, I just, mm -mm. I peeled nicely this lobe, which is that. That's, called the lobe like is this at the top of the ear called the lobe what i don't know what yeah that was weird too yesterday and that like thing like, like it was it was lazy and boring and droll mm -hmm. and angry and spitty and gross and all that stuff but it was also like patently stupid like it was amazingly lame um it's eight dollars a barrel for gasoline that's what the yes. prices have gotten to. It's okay. Seven, eight, yeah. I just want, I'm yeah. in a barrel. So if you went that, to yeah, like, like 14 cents, I don't know what that right. was. I'm like, I'm, I'm fucking, uh, yeah. You, so, so sorry, for $7, I could fill up my car four times. Positive inflation, too. Don't forget. Cool. <laughs> Right, right, right. Right. Welcome, by the way, welcome to the world of electric cars. Because once there's electric cars out there and not as many vehicles are using gas, what do you think the price goes down in terms of supply and demand if demand craters? By the way, there's going to be a glut of oil next year. Everybody's been talking about it in the oil markets. The Saudis know it. They've been trying to stave it off as long as possible. But China's slowdown, they okay so everybody built their uh their oil extraction strategy on the idea that china is this growing powerhouse that is even with their green energy initiatives which by the way i've been there are all bullshit all of them just a fucking farce anytime you're like they get more solar energy that they don't get shit it's it's cartoonishly false period I've seen the rows. I've seen rows of solar panels that are just glass with a, a paper design under the glass. Damn. Hooked up to nothing. Look at our giant green city. It's it's mm. hilarious. OK, it is. I always equate it to the inflated tanks before D-Day in World War Two. Mm. where they're trying to impress the Germans that the, the attack was coming from the north and it wasn't. That's what China's doing. China knew it was falling behind, so it decided to build empty buildings so that if you look at it from fucking space or you fly over it as a, de you know, as a, you know, a representative of another country, like, oh, my fucking God. Yeah. Never mind the fact that they're empty.
and no one lives in them and they're falling apart also like that's crazy but anyways the the uh oh where was i with the uh, oh god yeah so uh, green energy stuff there the idea was is that china's growing so fast that even with their green energy initiatives again which are bullshit they are going to use so much oil that we're going to be able to sell it for $120 a barrel because the demand from the rest of the, the western world and america is going to have to compete with this brand new enormous fucking demand from 1.2 billion people who are now becoming middle class and all this stuff. Okay, mm -hmm. not only did that not happen, it's reversing so fast at a clip that they are shocked by that the stockpiles of oil all over the world are growing. Mm -hmm. They can't move it fast enough. Mm -hmm. hmm. Even with Russia taken out of the mix, even with Russia's output lowered to a trickle, mm -hmm. there's still no demand. If the if the Ukraine war ends and Vladimir Putin gets his you know gets pushed out a fucking window or something, which is entirely possible and growing oh. possible by the hour, if that happens and we normalize with Russia and in an attempt to have them both pay you know pay for reconstruction of Ukraine and build their country back, we allow them to sell oil again, for example, for a time. Even with that extra oil back on the market, um, uh, like there's still nowhere for it to go. Mm -hmm. There's not a customer waiting for it. Mm -hmm. And that means next year, 2025, the uh, like, and all the oil futures point this direction that they just go, where the fuck is this all going? Like the production is, especially American production is well, through the roof. history. It's yeah. 2023 of any country, right? right. Yeah. Yes. We'll and, talk about and, that. And, <laughs> and the Saudis, uh, have used up most of their reserves. Really? Venezuela has a lot of reserves, but it's shit. It's it's the stuff that's hard to make. Trump makes a big story about that. Is the only one place that can process it, and it's in Texas. I'm like, well, why do you put that place out of business? If it's the, if Venezuela has, we're not begging for oil. If Venezuela can only process their oil in Texas, mm -hmm. why why wouldn't you want that? I don't understand. So that's just fucking dumb business wise. But then again, mm. Donald Trump is a man who does mm. not have the rights. To the to his mugshot, and so when he sells it on merchandise, has to pay a fee to the Fulton County court system uh, for, the, for the rights to that photograph. Which means Mr. Art of the Deal is currently funding both sides of his criminal case. He's paying his defense lawyers, and he's paying the prosecution. To I can't tell you how glorious that is. That is that detail alone makes me like spring out of bed in the morning and there's like cartoon daisies around the windows and little birds help me get dressed because of that fucking detail. Yes, so he's he's this very, very stable genius. And to your point about the oil, again, and him being a genius, one of their uh, recycled bullshit like things that their platforms, if you want to call it that, is he keeps saying drill baby drill, and it's like motherfucker we're drilling like we're drilling yeah. like and by the way like you just said we're moving towards uh you know electric vehicles the whole world is but so you're gonna drill baby drill we're gonna have a surplus and we're gonna be sitting on this oil glut and we don't have and we have don't even have the cars that need it that and they're they're like yeah drill baby drill it's like how stupid are you okay i think my feeling is in watching some of these things that there was a like a, a, a you know a, a nipple perk up that they had around Sarah Palin back in the day. The Tea Partiers yeah. were like, "Ooh, she's attractive and a governor, and she's coming out and saying mama bear shit and drill baby drill." I'm not gonna vote for her because she's a woman, but they were like very excited. And so when he says drill baby drill, like he invented it. He didn't invent it anymore. They invented America first or make America great again. Oh, it's everything's a fucking it's a theft or a reboot with his asshole. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But the the. The biggest thing when people say drill, baby, drill, I think we all have the uh, like normalcy blinders that all of us are like, well, we don't need all this oil and the markets will determine and blah, blah, blah. And, and I immediately go to who the U.S. government doesn't drill oil. You give leases to these companies and it's up to them if they use them and they have no impetus to lower the price of their own product ever. Why would Exxon want the price of oil to go down ever? Why? Why? What? What's the what's the big, you know, for America? Get the fuck out of here.
into no. Holy shit. Are you it's, nuts? They, like they're going to planet. Yeah. The oil companies have always edged the price up till the consumer almost breaks and then they fall back, right? Mm -hmm. A little bit. And then you they ease you up into a higher cost and then they back off a little bit. And it's just how they manipulate the public into what they will accept as the cost and, and base point for it. It's what they do. Mm -hmm. And it's what you would do with any limited product that you're running out of. I can't sell this for more than eight years from now. We're going to need a whole different business model. Mm -hmm. What are we going to do? Mm -hmm. That's yeah. what that is. So yeah. they, there's, there's, he, what does he mean drill baby drill? What are you going to send the Army Corps of Engineers out to drill for oil? Where? In fucking Yosemite? What are you talking about? Oh, Who's we, motherfucker? Yeah. Who's we? Mm-hmm. I yeah. don't, I still don't know what he means in that respect. I don't mean, like, again, I think we all normalize the idea of like, if there's this much oil in the market and there's this much and there's China's a market and oh, whether the price, of, that's very, that's a great conversation to have. But he's a government official. He wants to be a government official. How do you affect it? So yeah. you're going to, it makes no sense to me. It, it's the weirdest, like, what, what are you going to do? Force a private company to produce more product yeah. than, they, than they could to be profitable. Sounds very Republican. I don't think he just makes any sense at all. And then it contradicts itself. Like, he's like, I won't fund any school that has a vaccine mandate. And it's like, um, hi, every state. Hello, country, polio. Right? right? And they're like, and I won't tax tipped employees. Like, some tipped employees pretty much not, really don't pay taxes all that much. It's like, no, that's just really so that you, as an owner, cannot pay them a livable wage so that you can keep that down because you tell them they're not getting taxed on their tips. When I was a server, I never really had to, to pay taxes back at the end of the year because I barely made it on $2 an hour, et cetera, et cetera. Right. But he just says shit that's like, that doesn't make any sense. And nobody... Nobody pushes back. And that's, again, getting back to this original question yesterday. He didn't know what mythopristone was. He was asked about mythopristone. He was answering, he was using the word humane, but completely out of context, never answered the question about mythopristone, also never answered the question about how he was going to vote on the ballot measure in Florida that is potentially enshrining abortion in that state's constitution. And he didn't have an answer for that either. And they're like, oh, that's good enough for me. What? Oh, yeah. I will I will go even further. I well, I will let him off the hook in one instance. Mifepristone has four syllables in it. So uh he you know, you know, even at Horton, he tapped out at three. Right? Yeah. Nobody thinks it is. That would be a good question to ask our audience. Like, what do you think Donald Trump thinks Mifepristone? Oh my god. Yeah, it, yeah. Uh, the it debate. You know what would end the the debate in two fucking seconds is that they asked it, like after a question, if somebody said inflation or somebody said you know uh, it's like uh, you know what's you know like something about mifepristone or they asked about you know that explain to me what that is from your perspective like tell us tell us what you understand that to be inflation in the country because there's monetary inflation and then there's what's called supply shock supply shock is what we've gone through as a country which is why the fed has had such a hard time lowering interest rates and why raising interest rates didn't do fuck all to the actual inflation rate um what's happened is is that people have normalized to the cost of things and we have reshored factories and 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 gotten products you know have come back after being away for a while. And so you don't have to pay extra because production in Europe on chocolates and fucking wine and other stuff is back to normal post pandemic. So it no longer costs you extra to be at the front of the line to get the restaurants aren't competing for eggs just to try and get people back to the, uh, to their store, you know, to the restaurant at the end of COVID like they were, and then muscling the consumer out of every egg that was available during avian flu. That's what drove the fucking price up. It had nothing to do with how much money was available. None of the egg producers were like, oh, shit, this, uh, everybody's getting an extra $3,000 a month while their life is shut down. I'll, you know, I'll pump up the price. They called 60 million fucking animals during the avian flu. It takes months and months and months to, to, for a chick to become an uh, egg-laying hen. That's what happened. That's why eggs are cheaper now. That's why if you go to a regular grocery store, it's like fucking Costco now because they have the three-row 18 egg cartons. They never had those before. Why do they have them now? Because they want to, they, you, you, you were comfortable with the price point of $8 or $10 for a carton of eggs, but you're not going to buy a dozen eggs because somebody else got a dozen carton eggs for three now. Yeah. And so like, oh, you want the organic brown, you know, uh, omega-3 
fish oil <laughs> eggs, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. In, in, a, in a 18 pack, you'll pay eight bucks for those because you think you're getting a better one. It's got more mm-hmm. B, vitamin B12, all that kind of. That's why egg prices went up. That's supply shock being remedied by the end of a pandemic on our side and an end of a chicken fucking pandemic, right? And like the right. And Trump, you, you know why Trump thinks bacon is expensive? Mm-hmm. You know why fucking Trump thinks bacon is expensive? God damn it! It's because. Um. It's because he's looked at how much it costs at Mar-a-Lago to buy bacon again because they were getting it because you buy in bulk as a restaurant or anything. They buy from these suppliers. But now Americans, the average American, has the ability to buy. They got money in their pocket. They can buy bacon Mm -hmm. and they can buy the fat fucking extra fatty bacon, which is spectacular. And, um, and, And that used to be a thing you could only get at fancy pants restaurants. And so the fancy pants restaurants would get the cut that nobody wanted. Because yeah. everybody was taught that lean is better, blah, blah, blah. And so that's what you get in a regular grocery store. When you go in a regular grocery store, you used to, you'd go in there, and most of what you would see was this kind of leanish bacon, more meat than fat, and that's what you would see, because that's fucking Kroger's all over the country. Mm-hmm. But the big, thick-cut, fat shit that, that you get on a BLT at a Fancy Pants restaurant, that they didn't sell that to the grocery stores. They produce enough of it, for one. Mm. And they didn't sell it. And if they did sell it, it wasn't, it was outside the range of people being able to buy it. It was the expensive shit. Now people are buying the expensive shit. And it's more expensive for restaurants, especially dipshit, like rich asshole golf restaurants like Bedminster and fucking yeah. his L Club and his and the restaurant in Trump Tower and the and and uh Mar-a-Lago, they uh, to buy the thick cut stuff, their budget went up whatever 1.3%. And he's already in the fucking hole. That's mm. why he's mad about bacon. It has nothing to do with the cost of bacon for me and you. Yeah. Nothing. And he said he told on himself because he said order bacon. He said you can't even order bacon. Not he didn't say buy. Like I know that seems like a such a yeah. fine line, but it's and it's splitting hairs. But it is an important distinction because it goes back to like what he's really saying, which is that like I. I am thinking about bacon in these terms, not in your terms as average American people who go to the grocery right. store. He, he means order in bulk. Yeah. At a restaurant. But yeah, you're right. Order yeah. in bulk. But this is the thing too, like just getting back to like this, the fact that he couldn't answer any questions yesterday it, and it was still though, it, it couldn't answer questions at the debate and then nobody cared about that. Well, the people did actually who were watching it. The media obviously didn't. He just screamed louder and Biden just said facts quieter and had more difficulty saying them, but Trump never answered any questions. And when he was running in 2016 and fucking Marco Rubio had the semblance of a spine and he was asked about the nuclear triad by Hugh fucking Hewitt, that mm-hmm. answer was bananas it was bad mm-hmm. shit bananas and he clearly doesn't know damn fuck all about any of this including all the stuff you just said about right. shock and supply and all that he doesn't know fuck all about any of it but MAGA doesn't fucking care they don't right. care and i just don't understand that and the media is letting it happen again and i just right. don't understand that Here, here's what i will say this uh, you know me i'm i'm super happy clappy because i'm 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 what you call a stoic optimist Okay. Um, get up, put, fucking put your pants on and start marching forward. We have a we have a motto in my family that we'll cry when the hill is done, meaning that if there's a difficult task ahead of us, we'll cry after it's over. You can cry around the fire after you've made it over the mountain, but okay. there's no use in, in it until then. It's not going to help. It's not going to serve anything. And you're losing water from your body. It makes no sense. So- right. But yeah, we'll cry when the march is done is effectively uh, the root of that. And yeah. and I I I live that way. So I I I always look for a way through the woods. Anytime you're if you've ever you've ever seen somebody in a horror movie and they're running from the mud and they always trip over a fucking stick. OK, let me tell you something. When you're running from something awful in the woods, you don't trip. Oh. Nobody trips. Nobody because your fucking brain is on fire with adrenaline and other stuff. And you get like. I, at least my experience, I get like hawk vision when I'm running where I'm like, there's a tree, there's a stick, there's a tree, there's a stick, there's a branch, there's a tree, there's a stick, there's a rock, there's a, but like, it, you know, just fucking booking through the, cause I grew up in peak smell. So I like booked through the fucking woods, like a maniac. And, and, and the, because your brain kind of tightens around the problem, right? The, the, it matters more than like, oh, I should be careful. You know, like you're just like, you know, it matters. And even if you, 
fall, you're up and gone so fucking fast. You don't fall and go, my goodness. You know, like, it's just silly. Like, I, I always root for those people yeah. to get killed in horror movies. I'm like, please die. Please die. Please you're annoying die. me. Yeah. I, I'm podcasting right now. I will get back to you. Um, it's my girl. Um, so uh, it's, I'm usually finished by Ted because uh, that's how we go. But um, yeah, but anyways, point being, Trump um, in this uh, particular instance, I, I don't, I, for, I think he gets a deer in the headlights look whenever he's asked a question about any of these things. Like he, it's clear that he's like, he, and he even, it seems like he was, I, I think he honestly couldn't hear people a little bit, um, but also he faked it. Yeah. And it was like, notice how he could always hear it when it was a man's voice, but it, women's voices just kind of, you know, in one ear wound out the other, I guess. But, uh, but I like he, he hides behind his own ignorance in in a way that like he gets hyper focused in that panic on, okay, how do I bullshit my way out of this one? And usually it involves self aggrievance attacking the reporter what a nasty question um you know or or some sort of vagary yeah or just how terrible everything is here now and yeah yeah and that's weird too so what's your th first of all this asshole hasn't set foot in a commercial airport ever mm -hmm. that i know of mm -hmm. i have never seen footage of him in mm -hmm. any circumstance Walking to the Delta Gate. Maybe no, no, right? no, no. commercial. No. Mm -mm. Never. No. So what the fuck is he talking about when he says our airports are shit? Because I've been in a bunch of them lately, especially. Yeah. I've been all my life. I spent a, my, you know, my my son has flown almost as much as I have because of our uh, my custody agreement. So we're back and forth all the time. And we're we're in I, I've been in, in the Denver airport like 55 times. Right. And uh, I've uh, like I've been you know, obviously O'Hare and, and uh, mm -hmm. Midway and fucking Charlotte. Oh, my God. Like the amount of times I've flown through Charlotte. Um, I've been in like the, the, the smallest airport I was in was Reno, which is adorable. And um, and maybe Twin Falls, Twin Falls. They literally closed the airport at one point because there's only two flights a day. So after that second flight's gone, they're like, OK, clunk, you know, you're done. Um, and, and it's such a small place. Like you can go stay across the street. There's like a wagon. Um, right. But even that place was nice. Yeah, they're fine. Yeah. And they're all getting better. Oh, yeah. my God. And like all of New York is in hell's game. Like New York's not a fucking hell. He has no idea. He has no idea. He literally lives in a bubble. He never like, he right. doesn't drive. He doesn't go anywhere. He's not driven. He doesn't go anywhere that's not like from the golf club to the maybe rally that he shows up four hours late for to the hotel, maybe to the plane. Like he doesn't go anywhere right. real people go ever. He doesn't need an idea to buy right. cereal. Yeah. Well, you know, I've always said that like comedians have to live a normal life. Mm -hmm. comedians have to like if you're going to be a comedian you got to buy your own groceries yeah you got to you, you know you you can maybe you can fly uh you know a chartered plane every so often just to get to your gigs and the like but uh and and by the way i think it's better for uh comedians to fly chartered as fast as they can i still fly uh, commercial but uh because it makes them avoid doing com airline jokes it, like please just don't do any of those because that's what happens you joke about the life you know you spend yeah. so much time in fucking airports that's all you talk about same thing with hotels i don't want to i don't care what you were that you were watching forensic files in your room for three hours before the show we know go out i know more about most cities that i perform in than the people who live there because the minute i land I'm out. I want to see the place. I want to do something. I want to eat someplace. I want to see yeah. one of the sites. I want to do whatever it is. And, yeah. and, uh, and it's crucial to that because I, I want a real experience of the place. Yeah. That's, a, and, and again, it's why you kiss babies and shake hands and eat corn dogs and all that shit is part of the almost like reacclimating yourself. If you're in an administrative situation, you know what I mean? It's like the CEO walking the floor of the factory every so often. It's it's yeah. important. Right. You remind yourself that that's not what everything is like. Mm -hmm. He never does that shit. He yeah. can't stand his supporters. They're mm -hmm. all grossing him out. Right. And, and he leaves as fast as he fucking can. And so what does he know? How could he ever, even his kids, how the, like, 
Uh, how how do they have any fucking idea? He's a man of the people, Hal. He's he's a he's a he's You're a right. man, I'm sorry. man's hero. That he's that he's an every man's hero. And let's again we'll wrap wrap with this because fucking that's all yeah. a fraud and a con. And I just don't think that it actually plays as far as a lot of fucking people think it might. But Tim Walls really is all those things. He really is right. like a By real contrast. Right. He's the guy who is going to stop and help you fix your flat tire. Like, like there's the mm-hmm. joke, like, he's the guy, if you break your foot, like, he's going to mow your lawn. Like, they, J.D. Vance is the guy that's going to call the HOA on you because you've mowed your fucking lawn. Like, this is, the, Tim Walls is the real deal. He is like us. Yeah. He you know, he does get freaking corn dogs, and his daughter's like, that's meat, dad. And he's like, well, turkey, then. And she's like, that's meat, too, dad. But, like, he is. Yeah, all those and things. he's dead. In Minnesota, turkey's a vegetable. People have been misreading that quote and saying turkey's special or something because of the uh, the automatic thing. He said, in Minnesota, turkey's a vegetable. That was why it's a joke. That's why it's charming. That's why it's a dad trying to get his daughter to eat better because he's worried about her because he loves her. That's, that's, and he said, and it was so fucking fast. Like their conversation, good Lord. And it's like this, it's the one thing that like we're gonna have to suck this thing up with Joe Biden, and that sounds like a sexual reference. And I swear to God, I've never sucked up anything related to Joe Biden except for this. That's strange. I digress. But anyway, that's the thing. If we're gonna have if we're gonna be doing this, and we're doing this, right? We're gonna fucking do this. Mm-hmm. Having a ticket that has a former prosecutor, the first female, first woman of color, uh, vice president ever who prosecuted rapists and America's fucking dad, who by the way is only 10 years older than me. So I don't even know why I say that, but I, like <laughs> he's, he's in my dating pool, to be honest. Like that's the age group that I end up with. That's true. Yeah. Um, but, but like having that ticket right now, it gives us a chance mm-hmm. to be fired up, ready to make that motherfucker pay accountability, but also mm-hmm. like, Mm-hmm. and he's like that dad yeah, that we rescued warrior. from fox news and stuff yeah happy warrior yes I'm yeah i i and by the way as somebody who lives that every single day mm-hmm. and i and i was so happy like to learn who waltz was and get to know him as a candidate because i'm like yeah that's that's where i come from on my stream it, it felt like in a very strange way i was like oh yeah that's a, it's that's how you do it on the actual elected representative version of what I do. But the the uh, I I really have to say one of the and, and I know we have to wrap up and I want to thank you for having me on and I greatly appreciate it. Infotainmentawards.com. We have the documents. Feel feel free to like and subscribe. Um the there are two things that I really think he nailed it on, and all he has to do is just all he gotta do is barnstorm the country give live rallies and press these points over and over again. Her, I prosecuted uh, sexual assault, uh, you know, uh, I prosecuted fraudsters and I prosecuted, and I know Donald Trump's type. That line is great. And and uh, and and basically rewiring, which she seemed to do with the speech last night um, at the UAW, taking uh, Biden's phrases, you know, unions built the middle, middle class built America and the unions built the middle class. Um, and bit, bottom up and middle out. That's exactly her economic strategy. They're just going to find another way of saying it. I don't know that you could find a better way because it's kind of fucking right. rock solid. You don't need it. You just go, well, that's what we believe. That's why I was part of the Biden ticket. We both believe this bottom up, middle out. And, and it'll and that continuity will make people feel good. The other part of it um, is his uh, mind your own damn business. That him, that what I, you know, I was saying to, you know, like I, to a bunch of people, like it's come up. It's one of those things like, why hasn't somebody said that sooner about a bunch of this stuff? Now, people have felt it like it's none of your business. It's not your body. It's her body, blah, blah, blah. Like we because the threat is so big, the reaction is to the threat. And so people get angry and and out over their skis with their rage. And yeah. it takes away when you're enraged, it takes away your your sharper thinking. It takes away your resilience and your humor and the joy. And so you've got to back off that rage a little bit to be able to articulate your why you would uh, to pull in other people. It's why it's not. I mean, I hate the fight language. She's using it. And so and Trump's doing his fight, fight, fight nonsense. And I don't like fight as the language on it. But that's why it doesn't ultimately work because this isn't a fight. You're legislating things. You're going to have to reach across the aisle. You're going to have to talk to people. You're going to have to, you know, but his, but, but it's such a lighthearted way 
of saying, uh, you know, my body by choice in a lot of ways is mind your own damn business Mm -hmm. is so nice. And it's so, and it, and it's hard to like, I'm sure they'll try to, uh, you know, parlay it into some sort of anti-vaxxer shit and whatever they'll go. Well, what about big old bubble? It's, it's not the same thing. Yeah, exactly. Um, But in that particular instance, it's really hard to push back on. It's a really kind of bulletproof statement. They're not going to find a way to go after it. Oh, and that's what they've been so good at. What, what, why weird is so sticky and and why creepy is so sticky. Because they're like, what what do we do with this one? And we're the ones sort of flooding the zone with not shit, but like stuff for them to have to respond to for the first fucking time ever where they're like, but I, I want to yes. do the couch thing over here. I'm doing the couch thing, guys. I can't do the weird thing while I'm defending the couch thing. And it's like, and what meanwhile they're doing the rallies and they're just fucking killing it. So they're the ones on their heels all the time. And it's because they can't, they can't get through this. Like they can't get through simple messaging like that to mind your own business. It's perfect. He said it yesterday. He said it yesterday. Yeah. He's like, I, 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 you know, I, I like we have to whatever retool what we're saying and I don't really want to, or whatever he said at one of his, at the rally on Sunday, whatever it was. And then he said it yesterday in the meeting that he's just, he's having a really hard time finding her Achilles heel because she doesn't have a Hunter Biden waiting in the wings. They mm-hmm. tried it with like Doug's nanny story. Yeah. Like, yeah, we know he's divorced. We know she's remarried. He's remarried. She wasn't the nanny. What's your fucking point? Mind yeah. your own damn business. And, you and if you imagine, by the way, everybody, every time they go after him for that, they go after their own voters. Right. Right. Mm. Well, so good. Meanwhile, just on, on, a, on a lighter note, uh, um, Joe Rogan says he's voting for RFK Jr. Nick Fuentes is is staging a coup against Donald Trump in, from the Groiper maggot side of things because he's insufficiently America first. And uh, there was one one more. Yeah, one more person ditched out on him that was. Uh, uh, yeah, he's he, I mean, fuck, he's losing. And then yeah. 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 I mean, yeah, he's not calling Tim Pool. His, oh, Tim Pool, fucking Tim Pool. Yeah, he's not calling oh his support. I mean, he's not. He, he's, 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 it's shrinking ever, ever faster. And he's also, he's not, he's not capable. He can't get any additional support. He's not offering anything. He's not certainly offering anything new. But the New York Times, by the way, headline today on front, the front page was Trump unveils pandemic plan, no tax on tips, no fucking shit. Are you kidding me, New York Times? That's your headline? Yep, that was their hey. headline. That's it. It's also not a plan. It's not a plan. A, you can't fucking do it. What? What? You can have no federal tax on tips, but you're also going to get rid of the the ability to. um, I forget what it's uh, the acronym for it or whatever, but to count your tax, your state tax against your your federal tax, and he's going to eliminate that. So yes, you are going to get taxed on your tips. You're just going to get taxed heavier at the state level, and Mm -hmm. you won't be able to write it off. So stupid. So stupid. And the media is making it so. It's. It's so wonderfully dumb because it's not going to go anywhere. That's the thing, too. All of his business guys yeah. are like, are you out of your fucking mind? He doesn't have anything else. He doesn't have anything. He has nothing. He's offering nothing. Like, he can get nothing. So he's like, oh, let's do the tip thing. I don't know. We do the tip thing. Let's do it again. Stupid. So stupid. I'm sorry. I shouldn't punch right. down the, the the supporters as much as I do, but it just he's just, it's just, uh I like the couch joke. I'm going to go back to the couch jokes. Um, yeah. Yeah. I, I would I would like to say that Leah Thompson, I, yeah, I got to let you go as well. But Leah Thompson just posted uh, a clip of Trump's thing yesterday on Twitter. Oh, and, uh, and she wrote, I find this man super weird. And I did a love scene with a duck. We are. That, we ever. I, yeah. Um, I. Thompson. I cannot tell you how much I love Leah Thompson, you know, from, uh, uh, you know, back to the future, uh, Leah Thompson, uh, She's amazing. She's yes. amazing. <laughs> you didn't expect something. You were like, Leah Thompson with a you know, top rope. Like it was, it was amazing. Yeah. Yeah. Oh no. no but understand. Let me tell you something like I, that. I took my friends to see Howard the duck just because rumor had it. She was walking around in her underwear. I was a teenage boy. That's how we, that's the choices we make. Um, and I was absolutely right to do it. Oh, yeah. um, Between her and um, Jamie Gertz. Was that her name? Jamie Gertz. It was like, oh, dear. Yes. Is, like, hotter. Like, it, like, which. I mean, oh my God. And then there was the one from, um, 
the, the with the blonde short hair uh from the movie with eric Stoltz. Uh, uh, uh master tonio names the, no the, 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 the blonde with the movie with eric stoltz where she was a drummer and she was his friend and and leah thompson oh, is some also kind of wonderful she's yes. in it with leah yeah yes she had three names I, she has three names she's not dead she's great but she yeah. was super, super hot too it's a lot to pick from back then yeah pb king it was yeah, it was, uh, it was yeah. brutal but I, and again, you're talking about a guy who had a uh, poster of Linda Carter on my wall that I at, at eight years old that I of Wonder Woman. And I was like, I don't know what I would do with it, but I want one. <laughs> like, yeah, you know, as soon as I was a kid, I was like, oh, my God, eight years old. Um, by the way, this is why I have never had a problem with people saying they knew they were gay when because I knew I was absolutely madly in love with this woman when I was eight years old. And I was. Uh, attracted in a way I didn't understand, you know, um, that doesn't mean you act on it till you're an adult, but let me tell you, I was like, yeah, you know who you are. There's nothing wrong with that at all. Oh my God, that woman. And she turns out to be wonderful. Yeah. It was on channel 11 and it was like whoa he's so what is he i don't know he's so not wearing clothes and i was little i was really little but there was also an episode of buck rogers where like Wilma gets like i don't know taken over by an alien freak like vampire and then i was like am i gay i don't know like i'm looking back at that and <laughs> you know, the gold bikini and i'm like am i gay because i have weird but I, you know i'm not the only person probably felt something with the gold bikini but anyway that's probably a <laughs> Um, yeah, no question. So uh, again, thank you for having me on. You're wonderful. I let you go. I I, I, you said you said talk all you want, and I was like, you're gonna have the longest podcast of your effing career if I do. Dave so. Foley's episode when we talked about aliens for 42 hours was definitely longer. So you don't take the record there because right. Dave and I talked. I think Dave and okay. I talked for two and a half hours, but mostly about aliens. But um, no, thank sure. you, Hal, for coming on. I am a huge fan of yours, yeah. but also I know you as a human being now, and that is the coolest thing in the world. And you're also as as an amazing human being as I would have ever expected you to be. And, oh, uh, and you're funny as fuck, hey, guys. The sexy liberal tour, which is still going, next tour date is Chicago, I think. Hal yeah. is one of the funniest human beings I have ever seen <laughs> in my life. You were your whole entire set. I was nearly peeing my pants. So it is the truth. Uh, God's honest truth. I had you. no idea you were I that fucking that. funny. You are a genius. But, oh, right on. Well, thank uh, you very uh, much. And uh, and Nerd Halen is the night before. And then uh, we're doing Monsters on the Mountain uh, in Gatlinburg, Tennessee on the 24th. Uh, we're, we're the closing night show at the Monsters of Rock mountain festival um nerd halen is and i'm also doing stand up there with uh punchlines and backlines which is comment comedians perform and then we have a rock star come up and do stand up for the first time uh on as part of the oh. show and close Jeez. out the show yeah yeah um oh, wow super wow. good very excited yeah. yeah so anyways you're wonderful thank you for having me on i'll let you go and then there you go and then next time we'll talk aliens and we can have dave on and i'll uh, you know i'll take you guys to the mat because i actually saw one a, a UFO. Yeah. You when have to each podcast and he should be on your show because you can talk about that. And yeah, because he has a, he knows he has a whole podcast about aliens. Oh well then I, I, I I'm so, yeah. Right. Yeah. Okay. Well yeah, we'll that's, make that happen. That's, that's a well yeah, please do. That I love that idea. Yeah, Kids consider it done. done. We're done. Well, this thanks again to my guest, Hal Sparks. This concludes this episode of the Are You Effing Kidding Me podcast. Um, guys, check out all the things that Hal Sparks was just telling you about and go see him perform. He's amazing. Um, we will uh, keep fighting the good fight and let's fucking win this thing. Yeah, yeah. And thanks again, oh. Hal. Thanks everybody for watching and listening, and we will see you next week. Bye. Bye, Hal. Bye. <laughs> and scene. <laughs>